Hello and welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Today I'm going to be doing a pour on a piece of plywood and this piece of plywood size is 61 centimetres, that's 24 inches by 27 and a half centimetres, that's 10 and three quarter inches by one centimetre um, thickness. What I'm going to be doing is, because this is plywood, I find that plywood will release um, little air bubbles and gases. So I always prime I mean, you this, could prime it with a um, thin coat of clear resin, but I think that's an expensive way to do it. So not only do I do the face, but I will also go round and do all the edges as well. So one of the things to make sure that you do is, especially when you've got such a big board and you're actually gonna be doing quite an intricate pour, is to ensure that your board is level. Now, as you can see, my bubble is right in the middle of the level that way, right in the middle of the level that way, right in the middle of the level that way, and if I go across that way, then we're still level. So I'm confident that where that board is sitting now, that that is level. Because if it's not level, what's gonna happen is it's going to pour off uh, unevenly. And we don't want that to pour off unevenly. And the next stage is we need to decide where we're going to have the divides. Now, I could do a divide down the middle like this, so there's three separate sections. What I'm looking for is something a little bit more different than that. So how I'm gonna have it is I'm gonna have the divides come across like that. And I'm not having them in straight lines, I'm gonna have them in waves. So what I'm going to be doing is drawing from that corner and I'm gonna be drawing a wave there. I'm not sure if this is picked up in here on this um, blackboard, black pencil, blackboard, black backing. And then what I'm gonna be doing in here is I'm going to be drawing another line so I know that they're my three areas that I want to draw into. And then to keep these separate, I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a glue gun here to create a barrier. Now this glue will come off. It does take a bit of picking sometimes but I'll show you that at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a barrier, almost like a dam, around this board where I've got my um, penciled lines. And don't forget to go down the edges, the sides as well, and create a little dam there. So as you can see now, I've put the hot glue on there and it's starting to cool down. Now, oddly enough, even though it's hot glue and it won't take long to cool down, what I've found is if I leave this a couple of hours um, before I pour the resin in, I get a much sharper edge to it. So the glue on here has dried now and it's quite, it's quite firm. And what you must do is make sure you've got no bits on it. I've got a few like little cobwebby bits. I'm going to take those off. And there's a bit there as well that I'm not happy with. I'm just going to pick that off. Okay, so all we need now to do is um, pour our resin. Now, I'm going to pour my resin here and here first. Um, because then once that's cured, I can then take this glue up. It'll have a nice edge and then I can pour the second bit, making sure I don't cover it up, which I will show later on. Um, but at the moment, I'm just pouring these two bits. This is not gonna go on as thick as this um, glue. No way, nowhere near. So the glue will still be above the, um, above the actual resin itself. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this white on. I'm not going to put it too many places. I'm not going to put great big blobs of it if I can help it. 
that's enough for starting with and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this just around here like this with this grey Okay, so I'm going to leave that now for a few minutes before I even think about <coughs> going over it with my torch. And now I'm going to be doing the same thing here with this purple. Make sure I've got some down the sides. I'm going to put this gold through here. And again, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. Now, the gold's not going to quite show like the white did. Um, so I may have to go over that again to get the gold to show. Okay, let's put some gold on these edges as well. Okay, so I'm really happy with that now. I'm going to leave that a few more minutes. And then what I will do is I will go over that lightly with my torch to get rid of the um, the bubbles. But what I won't do is I don't want to heat this up and move it around too much. I'm not probably going to use my air gun uh, because I want to uh, keep these patterns as much as I possibly can that I've created for when I go and do the middle panel as well that's going to be very similar. So now this is cured, uh, these two end bits here are cured, it's time to um, remove the glue and fill in the um, middle bit. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can just fill it in now and have it butt up against these um, resin edges or you can fill this bit in then remove the glue and have like a different colour, maybe black or something like that, fill in the small trenches that are left here. And I'm not going to do that today because what I want, I want the colours to butt up against each other. But what you must make sure is that your resin is completely cured before you remove the glue. Because if not, what will happen is um, the glue um, will pull your resin away. Now, this is not always easy to pull off, and it will, as you can see, remove the um, paint. But I'm not too worried about that, because before I, um, before I cast this again, I will just run a very thin paintbrush along there to um, remove this paint. I mean to cover this paint up. The other thing is you might find is like I have done here that actually the glue doesn't want to always come up and sometimes you just need to lever it up. I use a palette knife to lever it up. But I have never found the actual glue itself stick to the uh, resin which is great. So there we go. So I'm going to continue to remove this now off camera and then we'll be back in a second. Okay, so there we go. I've removed the glue. And the other thing that you'll find is um, using this method is that where you've had the glue and the resin is cured, it'll have shrunk away and left a little lip up against the um, glue. Now, if you don't want that little lip, then what you can do is just use it, pour into it, and then do a clear coat over the top, and that will get rid of that, that ridge as well. But I kind of like doing this. So I'm just going to finish that off, doing that technique of just heating up my X-Acto knife blade. Don't touch it, because it is very hot. And literally just following the contours of uh, that ridge. So there we go, I've gone through that now, I've got rid of all that ridge, all that glue, and I'm not sure if you can see now, it has left a really nice, neat little lip. So when I do my final pour on here, with this bit here, 
with the silver and the purple, um, was it purple I was going to use? Silver and the electric blue, that will show up really well. All I have to do now is repaint these bits here um, to ensure that it's evenly covered in black. So I'm now ready to do the final pour on this and actually I've changed my mind a little bit about what I'm going to do because I was going to use a metallic grey and a purple to do the little swirly bits in but I've changed my mind because I think it's going to be too similar to this gunmetal uh, grey that I've got here or this meteorite grey so what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a black base with a yellow um, swirly bit in it and again I've just mixed it up using um, mica powders so here we go I'm going to do the first pour and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and avoid the um, pouring right up to the edges because I want this to find its way to the edges rather than me pouring to those edges because I don't want them to um, overflow over what I've already got there. I just want them to butt up against each other. And before I put the other um, resin in it, I shall heat it up with my air gun. Firstly, to get rid of some of the bubbles, but secondly, to make sure that it is butting up as close as it can be to uh, those other edges. There we go, that's now covered, so I just need to put the yellow on it. Um, when this is finished, I'm not sure whether I'm going to um, use this as a um, picture on the wall, or actually, because I've made it out of really good quality plywood, which again wasn't very expensive, what I may do with it is I may put four little legs on it, underneath it and use it as a little side table or an occasional table in um, one of my rooms because you know it, it is quite versatile I've used a heat resistant resin on here so it doesn't matter if it gets um, hot drinks put on it so as a table it probably would work quite well next bit so you need to be quite careful again with this because what you don't want to do is push a lot of resin around um, onto what you've already got and as you can see when I'm going to the edges I'm not actually scraping up towards the edges I'm scraping down and around them because again that will stop it flowing over. And this pattern does create quite a few bubbles, but they soon go with your torch, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna quickly go over this with my torch, and as you'll see, it will burst those bubbles, get rid of them, and they will just fill in. And then I will babysit this probably for about 10 minutes, and every time some bubbles come up, I will just go around that and burst those bubbles, because nobody wants bubbles in their work. Well, unless you've decided you want bubbles, then of course you do want bubbles. So maybe people do want bubbles in their work. This has been curing now for about four days because I just haven't had the opportunity to get back to it. And as you can see, it's cured nicely. There's a very distinct line uh, between here and here and here and here and um, it's come off quite well. I hope that you can see that. Um, I find that it's the e this is the easiest way to ensure that you don't get any blending of the colours and you get those nice crisp lines. So what I'm going to do next is I have decided that I'm going to turn this into a table. So I shall remove these um, little bumps using my hot knife and they'll just pop straight off. I'm then going to paint or cover this back bit, add a couple of legs to it, uh, I don't know, one and a half foot legs. So add four legs to it, and I'm actually gonna use it as a little side table somewhere. I'm gonna finish off these edges, but you can buy a proper edging tape. So I'm gonna finish those edges off nice. I'm also gonna pour on here with a really hard wearing 
um, heat resistant resin I flood it all over before I do that um, so that it's protected against uh, scratches and cups and things like that and I think that will make a really funky um, little side table um, and there is a real distinct um, line between the pores. So I hope you found this video useful. You can use this technique to do lots of different shapes, faces and different things like that. I've got another project that I'm planning to do using this that I might show you in the next video that I make with this because I'm going to do a video that shows you how to attach legs and how to turn something like this into a um, little table. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and if you don't want to miss out on my videos, then hit the notification bell because it really does help my channel to grow and it, uh, also f um, YouTube identify that it's had um, interaction and then they'll show it to other people. Please leave a comment. I absolutely love comments. I love chatting with people. I feel like I'm getting to know a lot of my subscribers now really well and it's great. I love chatting to them. It's like having pen friends from when I was uh, younger. If you've got any questions as well, please leave a question in the um, comments of this video on YouTube and I will get back to you. I will answer all your questions. But once again, thank you very much. Have so, have so much fun. Be safe and uh, enjoy your resin art. Thank you very much. Bye.